One of the simpler type of earthquake analyses available in GeoStudio is what is known as a Newmark type of analysis. A Newmark type of analysis seeks to find the moments of time during the shaking when there is a loss of stability. That is to say, the moments of time when the factor of safety is less than one. The idea is that when the factor of safety is less than one, the slope will undergo some movement. And the ultimate objective then is to accumulate all the spurts of movement. A Newmark type of an analysis, however, has only limited application for specific situations. A Newmark type of analysis suitable for cases where the main issue is inertial forces, mass times acceleration. And secondly, a Newmark type of analysis is appropriate where there is no significant loss of shear strength due to the generation of excess pore pressures. For example, we might use a Newmark analysis for clay soils that behave in an undrained manner, or for cases where we have coarse granular soil or rock fill where there is no possibility of the generation of excess pore pressure during the shaking. Here is a case history. You can see the uh, publication here, and if you're interested in more information, you can go to this publication. And uh, it is a situation where it would have been appro perfectly appropriate to do a Newmark type of an analysis. It is a mine waste dam in Peru, and the characteristics of this facility are that it was a dumped unclassified material and uh, this structure was designed for temporary diversion of water. So most of the time it was dry, there was not much water being uh, retained by this structure. And so they had a concrete apron to reduce the seepage through the structure during the time when there was some water in the reservoir. And they had some compacted material here, but for the most part it was just uh, coarse dumped mine waste. The other observation is that the side slopes are very steep and so that the static factor of safety was quite low. And what is interesting about this uh, case history is that shortly after the dam was completed it was subjected to a very large earthquake. The publication says 8.3, but when I was in Lima not terribly long ago at a workshop, one of the participants noted that this was a, a dam that was at the mine site where he had worked or was working and said that the magnitude at the dam site was not 8.3, but nonetheless it was well over 7 and it was a very significant earthquake. And as I've already noted, it was dry much of the time and used for temporary storage of flash flood runoff. In the end, the, uh, after the earthquake, it was evident that there had been a little bit of crust settlement. Uh, the publication reports about five centimeters of settlement. So here is a case where there was no a possibility of generation of excess pore pressures and the, the static factor safety was quite low and as a consequent a perfect situation when a Newmark type of an analysis would be very appropriate. So here is the analysis tree for an analysis in GeoStudio. The uh, f first thing to do is to establish the in situ stress state we can do that either with quake or with sigma, but we have to know the stress rate in the ground before the shaking starts. Then the second analysis is a quake analysis to do the shaking type of analysis. And then when the shaking analysis is over, the results are taken into slope 
and in slope we use the quake results to compute the permanent deformation. So the key piece of information that is required in quake for this type of an analysis is a time history record of the earthquake. We need to have a record of acceleration versus time. Without this type of information, it is not possible to use Quake W. And you can see then, as the structure is subjected to this type of uh, input, that there are times when the motion will be downslope and as a result destabilize the slope, but there are also times during the shaking when the movement is upslope and it will incre actually fact increase the factor of safety. So our idea here is to follow through the earthquake record and determine the factor of safety at each point during the time stepping through the earthquake record. To begin with then, we have to talk a little bit about dynamic stresses. Quake W gives the results, or the Quake W results give the static, static plus the dynamic stresses in the ground. Let's call this sigma quake or quake stresses. The static stresses are available from the initial in situ stresses. So to start the analysis, as we noted in the previous slide, we have to establish the static stress rate in the ground. From this initial conditions, we can get the sigma static or the uh, static stresses. Then, once we are finished with the quake analysis, we can take the quake results, quake, sigma quake, minus the initial in situ static stresses, and this gives us the dynamic stresses in the ground during the shaking. Once the quake analysis is complete, we can take those quake results into slope W, and then we use the same procedure as when we use sigma static stresses in slope to compute a factor of safety. For each time that the quake results are saved, we can then compute a factor of safety. And as a result, in the end, we can produce a graph of factor of safety versus time. So here we have factor of safety versus time. And you can see the oscillation in the factor of safety of the slope and during the earthquake shaking. Having this picture of the variation of factor of safety during the Shaking gives us some kind of an appreciation for the fact that uh, the factor of safety does change a lot during the dynamic action and during the motion. And as we can already see here, that there are times when the factor of safety is very high. But we already begin to see here, even at this stage, that there are moments of time here where the factor of safety is less than one. And so to follow the Newmark thinking, it is the, there is some movement during the time when the factor of safety is less than one. And our objective here is to accumulate the movement during these short spurts of time. In order to do that, we have to first of all determine what is known as the yield acceleration. So again, using the same procedure as in a sigma slope factor of safety analysis, the dynamic mobilized shear force at the base of each slice is computed. So that's the first step. We compute the dynamic mobilized shear force at the base of each slice. And we do this by taking the quake results minus the uh, static stresses and then we get the dynamic stresses and from using more circle techniques we can then find the mobilized shear at the base of each slice exactly the way we do when we use static stresses in slope to compute the factor of safety. Next the, dy the dynamic mobilized shear force along the slip surface is tallied up. 
we get the total value of the dynamic mobilized shear along the slip surface. And then the next thing is to take the average acceleration is then computed as the total, the total mobilized shear divided by the entire sliding mass. And so we get A is equal to the force, which is the total mobilized shear force, divided by the mass of the slice gives us an average acceleration. We do this at each time step during the shaking. And in the end, we get this type of graph. So at each time step, we compute an average acceleration, and we produce this graph. And then once we have this graph, then we come along where the factor of safety is 1. And where the factor of safety is 1, we pick off the acceleration. And that is this acceleration is known as the yield acceleration. So the key piece of information then is that we need to know the yield acceleration, which in this case, in this example, might be 0 0.11. Knowing the yield acceleration, then we have an average acceleration versus time during the shaking. And so now we know the yield acceleration, which is just over 1. And so now we come along and we integrate the area where the yield acceleration is greater or the average acceleration is greater than the yield acceleration. And integrating the area then gives us the velocity versus time. And doing a second level of integration, we get the deformation versus time. This re procedure is repeated for each trial slip surface. So you can see that the procedure is computationally very intensive. Not only do we have to th go through this whole process of determining a factor of safety at each time step that data has been saved during the shaking. We have to determine the average acceleration, and then we have to determine the deformation, and we have to do this where every trial slip surface. So when the process is finished, then eventually it is possible to sort the trial slip surfaces by the amount of deformation. So here is a column of the deformations. And uh, this column can be sorted based on deformation. And these results can be s sorted based on deformation. And as a consequence, we can find the slip surface that gives us the maximum amount of deformation. So this then is a brief description of the Newmark type of analysis in GeoStudio. But to repeat one more time, a Newmark type of analysis can be applied only to certain situations. And to reiterate again, a Newmark type of analysis is suitable when there is no a significant possi a s no possibility of a significant strength loss during the earthquake shaking like in clay soils or the possibility of the generation of excess pore pressures or it is the applicable for cases where we have coarse granular soils so that needs to be kept in mind when this type of a method is applied to a field case so this is the end then of the short section on describing the Newmark type of an analysis.